This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. For 26% off CuriosityStream and Nebula, use the link in the description. What makes you, you? Is it the clothes that you wear? Probably not, thank God. Is it the way that you look? Uh, maybe, but there's probably someone out there that comes pretty close. Personality then, right? Being kind or adventurous or very, very boring isn't exactly unique to you. But if there is one thing that is, then surely it's your DNA. So what happens if it changes to someone else's? Well, that happened to this man, Chris Long, a Sheriff's Department employee from Nevada whose DNA changed to that of a man in Germany 5,000 miles away. It sounds like one of those outlandish conspiracy theories. I mean, how can your DNA be replaced? How can you survive with different DNA? And how the hell does this guy have someone else's? But it turns out it happens all the time in medicine and is, in a manner of speaking, completely deliberate. Chris, like tens of thousands of people every year, was the recipient of a bone marrow transplant, a procedure used to treat blood cancers and other blood diseases like leukemia, lymphoma and sickle cell anemia. Bone marrow is the semi-solid spongy substance inside bones that replenishes blood cells. However, technically it's not the bone marrow that is transplanted, but the stem cells collected from it, which are then simply injected into the recipient's bloodstream via a vein. By having the transplant, it's hoped that the patient's weak blood is replaced by the donor's healthy blood, and with it, the DNA that it contains. A colleague of Chris's at the sheriff's office working in forensics knew that this could happen after a bone marrow transplant. And so, with Chris's permission, began sampling his DNA. And just four months after Chris's life-changing treatment, and his blood no longer contained any of his own DNA. And that wasn't the only thing that had changed. Test swabs taken from his lips and cheeks were now a combination of his own DNA and his donors, with the percentages of each rising and falling over the following years. But even stranger was that Chris's semen had been completely replaced by that of the donors. Chris had truly become a genetic chimera, the technical term for the rare person with two sets of DNA. But what interested Chris's forensic colleague wasn't his semen. It was the implications of how a chimera like Chris could affect a criminal investigation, despite how low the odds of it actually happening were. Because if only one person responds to the treatment like Chris did and goes out and commits a crime, it could mean the difference between catching the perpetrator and falsely imprisoning an innocent person. And as unlikely as that sounds, this exact situation has already happened. In 2004, investigators in Alaska extracted DNA from a semen sample left at a crime scene and uploaded it to a criminal DNA database. It matched a potential suspect, but there was a problem. The man in question had been in prison at the time of the assault. And yes, you guessed it, he had indeed received a bone marrow transplant. The donor, his brother, was eventually charged and convicted. And in another case in Alaska, a sexual assault victim's account was brought into question when she said that there had only been one attacker, contradicting the DNA evidence showing there had been two. Eventually, police determined that the second DNA profile had actually come from her bone marrow donor. And it's not just in criminal cases where this can become an issue. Other confusing scenarios can arise too. 
Like in South Korea in 2008, when police were trying to identify the victim of a fatal car crash, the blood analysis showed the victim was female when the body parts appeared to be male, which was later confirmed by DNA in his kidney. And after further investigation, it was shown that the victim had received a bone marrow transplant from his daughter. So what does this all mean for the future of forensic evidence? Well, personally, I don't think all that much. I mean, yes, investigators will have to consider that this is a possibility, but considering the odds, I don't think that we're going to see any major impact to the way that DNA evidence is handled in the courtroom. Then again, I'm not a lawyer. And what about Chris Long's offspring? I mean, his semen DNA was found to be 100% that of a German man's living 5,000 miles away. Well, the finding was interesting until scientists found out that Mr. Long had had a vasectomy. Semen and sperm are not the same thing. Semen, or seminal fluid, contain a number of different cells, but mostly sperm cells and white blood cells. During a vasectomy, the tubes supplying sperm to the seminal fluid are cut or blocked, so whilst Chris's semen will still contain white blood cells, it won't contain any sperm cells. And so, what was being analysed as sperm didn't actually contain any, and was in fact seminal fluid that had been contaminated with the donor's white blood cells. However, this doesn't mean a donor's DNA could be passed on in a patient that had not had a vasectomy. But simply, bone marrow doesn't make sperm cells. So then, what makes you, you? Well, maybe it's not always the DNA in your body. Maybe it's just the DNA that you pass on to your children. What a marvellously profound thought. It's also a load of rubbish. And on that bombshell, I now have to go and tidy up a playroom, uh, clean up some regurgitated banana, uh, pack two school bags, make a stack of sandwiches, and clean a lot of snot off a school sweater sleeve. So glad I passed on my DNA. Yay. Joking. I love you, children. I know you'll be watching this in the future, and it's important that you know that. Hey, thanks for watching. Although, if you were watching on Nebula, then right now you'd be watching an extended edition where I'm talking more about DNA chimeras plus BTS instead of watching me here. What's Nebula? It's a streaming platform made for and owned by creators, featuring such edu legends as Wendover Productions, Real Life Law, Braincraft, Mike Boyd, Mustard, Lindsay Ellis, Legal Eagle, Real Engineering, Abby Abdul, Jordan Harrod, Austin McConnell, and many more. You'll find all their videos, extended episodes, and Nebula original content that you won't find anywhere else, like Tom Scott's Money Game Show. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I think you're full of shit. I wish I could show you. I have oh. nothing in my box. There's a lot of suspicion gone over that. But what has all this got to do with CuriosityStream? Well, as the best place on the internet for documentaries, CuriosityStream loves educational content and educational creators. So Nebula has partnered up with them, so when you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link below, you'll also get Nebula for free. It's not a trial, you'll have full access to Nebula as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. And, for a limited time only, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off their annual subscription. That's less than $15 per year for CuriosityStream and Nebula. And if you like this video and you're into true crime and forensics, then there are a bunch of shows for you. Like Dynamic Genomes. But now, advances in technology have led to remarkable discoveries in these mysterious regions of our genome. So click the link below to get CuriosityStream and Nebula for just $14.79 per year. Yes, that is per year. I looked it up, that is less than five averagely costed US coffees. I think it's 
really worth it. Um, and also, uh, if you use the link below, curiositystream.com forward slash Don Burgess, you directly help my channel out. I actually get a little bit of money each time someone signs up using that link, as you're probably aware, but um, it really does help me out. So sign up today. Thanks. Actually, I'm going to stay here because uh, there'll be some videos coming up here now. Oh, look, there's one. That's a good one. Equally good, maybe better. I can hear my wife talking on the phone in the next room. I wonder what she's talking about. Can you hear? I wonder if it's sensitive information. She's probably talking about... No, actually, I, I don't want to speculate. It's too dangerous.